The specialities I've read are a group of hymenopterans, so we're talking about bees and wasps, which are sand-loving species, basically. That's true. Um, over, the past, uh, over the past 10 years, we've amassed a, a list of bees and wasps, particularly from the Ardea Peninsula, which is the dune system that kind of butts this one, uh, over 100 species of bees and wasps, which is the largest list in Scotland. Um, so it's a great site for, for bees and wasps, massively threatened uh, by all kinds of developments, um, and this is something, one of the reasons we record bees and wasps and other creatures so intensively is to try and protect against uh, development of the site. more evidence we have, it's an important site. Hopefully the more chance that we have, it's not going to be developed. Mm. But we do, here is something that I collected in the sunshine yesterday. Um, very hard to, hard to see. This is a, a northern Calites mining bee. And hold on, a, nor a, no a northern? Calites. Calites mining bee. Yeah, it's a speciality of sand dune systems in the the north and west of, of Britain. Right. And this one here, um, if you can see it, is a very funky looking one. It's Epiolus crusider. This one parasitizes the nests of northern Calites. So I found both of them flying around the same sandbank um, yesterday on the reserve. There is some discussion at the moment down south that Epiolus crusider is actually two species, two cryptic species. Right. One which attacks uh, a heathland Calites and one which attacks a sand dune Calites. Right. So we've collected samples of Epiolus from each type of habitat and we've sent them off for genetic analysis in Germany and this month there should be some DNA barcoding done to tell us if this is actually two species right. or not. Um, I can't judge you, I have no intuition, uh, but I hope certainly it is a, a different species. Yeah, different species. Well, in which case you get two rare species of bee rather than <laughs> one, which doubles your hand when it comes to protecting the area. I mean, you know, now a lot of people, you know, are excited by Scottish wildlife and they normally think of golden eagles, wildcats, pine martens, I could go on. Uh, yeah. This is, you know, from my point of view, every bit as important, mm. the, yeah. these, these little guys here. It's all part of having a, 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 a broad functional ecosystem, isn't it? Sure. They're a difficult place to look after, sand yeah. dunes. Oh, definitely. Um, I think one of the reasons the dunes are eroding so much here is constant trampling. So at the moment we've got uh, a couple of grants in for um, building some new dunes. We've got 5,000 in total to build some new dunes in the reserve. So the, the fencing project is designed not just to trap sand to build dunes, but to kind of keep people off the most sensitive areas. Okay. And the project that you've got at the moment, you're facilitating with, with £5,000, yeah? 5,000, it's going to be match funded actually by a, a ISPB affiliated project called Garnet Connections mm -hmm. and they're topping up I think it's about 11,000 odds. 11,000 pounds. Yeah, so that would be a good, a good big project. Do you know what, in conservation terms that's not a lot of money, is it? It's not, it's not a lot of money at all. And I, I'd really like to say at this point, you know, we're fundraising, we're crowdfunding for, for this initiative and this is just the sort of project that we would like to support. You know, it's difficult to raise small sums of money for projects which can sometimes, forgive me, be seen as relatively obscure, certainly not big and glamorous. So if you can give anything to our crowdfunding uh, campaign, it would be absolutely fantastic because I'm sure Ian will be glad to receive some of your funding. And so would these remarkable little insects that he's put back into his pocket to release on a sunnier day.